So very good evening to all of you. Uh, today we are going to start our fifth online teaching class. Uh, for this, I would like to invite Dr. Pekchi Chaudhary. She is a senior consultant, Radish Oncology, Max Super Specialty Hospital, Vaishali. Dr. Pekchi, can you take over? Thank you, ma'am. Good evening and a warm welcome to everyone in this series, educational series of uh, uh, under the ages of UPROI. So we have started with central nervous system and till date we have covered anatomy, radiology, diagnostic workup, pathological classification and contouring of gliomas. So today in this fifth session, we will be taking up uh, the contouring of non-gliomas and except medulloblastoma. To take the session, I would like to invite Dr. Kanu Charan Petro, although he needs no introduction still. He is head of the department of uh, uh, department of radiation oncology at Mahatma Gandhi Cancer Hospital, Vishakhapatnam. He has a special interest in CNS malignancies. He is a very good orator, and we all are being uh, benefited by his oratory and educational skills. Over to you, Doctor Petro. Uh, good evening, ma'am. So, though uh, uh, I, today is the topic of uh, contouring of non glymatous tumor. Uh, but uh, as uh, people have requested to put some slides about 2D planning because most of the centers in UP still there is a cobalt facility only. So I am uh, first uh, around 20-30 minutes I will um, give the discussion about the 2D planning. After that remaining time I will go for the non glymatous tumor contouring. Uh, good evening everybody. Today I am going to tell about 2D planning in brain tumor. So the most of the centers in the country occupied by the 3D system and uh, IMRT, ARC system, SRS, SRT, still some centers we have a cobalt and uh, some 2D planning. So uh, let's discuss about the some 2D planning in the brain tumor cases. So, so if you see, if you go through this stepwise planning system, stepwise treatment simulate from uh, starting from the clinical decision to review, first we take clinical decision. So, if you see, this is the um, 2D planning. So, this is the clinical decision, CT simulation, co-registration, contour. So, this is the system, uh, what we go through it uh, from clinical decision to the review. Step by step, we go like this. And uh, so, because 2D planning, we need at least by clinical method. We have, if you have a simulator, you can use simulator. And if you have a digitizer, you can use the digitizer. But we need a, at least the imaging topo with this uh, localizer. This is called the localizer lines and uh, each line corresponds to the, uh, the level of slice. So, this is the um, topo and this is the scale. If you scale, this is the scale. So, you have to, uh, you have to uh, extrapolate your scale into your paper and you do the measurement. I will tell one by one how to do. So, uh, this is the step for 2D planning. You can see the scale on topo, find the localizer on the topo Follow the slice with localizer and topo. Fix one anterior point, fix one posterior point. Extrapolate scale the on paper. Measure the tumor distance from your fixed points. Mark the points on localizer on each line. Join the line. You will get the tumor outline. Give margin and open the field. So this is the, we have two um, ammunitions. One is the topo, one is the scaling. So this is the topo what uh, usually on the uh, if, then now though if you see the recent MRI MRS they don't have put the localizer at all. So when you are asking for the patients if you don't have a 3D planning ask your uh, radiologist to give the topo with localizer with scale. So this is the uh, how um, uh, it looks like uh, if it is a um, uh, this is the topo this is the scale here and each corresponding localizer it gives the slice. So this is the uh, method. I will again. I will clarify it. Don't worry. So after that, you take the um, patient's body contour by skull contour. Uh, you have to take the anterior round and post lateral also, and put. The, you have to measure the full contour by a copper wire or lead wire, and uh, you have to put in the um, white paper. And this is suppose this is your uh, skull contour or um, 2D contour. Suppose this is your tumor, then you give the open either open field or a wedge field or combination of open and wedge field. So if you have a digitizer, you ask your physicist or seat your with your physicist 
to make the digitization you can see the isodoses so the suppose this is a patient and this is the uh, this blue mark is the tumor so what do you have to do you have to see, fix a point on the external occipital protuberance or glavian um, though this uh, this two uh, you find out how much distance from the you have to measure with this scale not your scale this scale you have to measure suppose it is it is 4 cm you put a line if your tumor posterior border is it 4 cm you put a line in the 4 cm dot in 4 cm in this slice if uh, anteriorly you show the in this slice you put anterior point and posterior point in next slice suppose it is from 3 cm you put a posterior point then again anterior point then posterior point then anterior point posterior point was anterior point every slice you have to measure from the fixed point and you have to mark it so you take it take it and you join it so this is your tumor roughly this is your tumor after this fixing this point suppose you have a glioblastoma or high grade tumor you give 2 cm margin around this and then you open the field like this either a rectangular field or a square field according to your choice so this is the basic uh, reconstruction of tumor on the topogram and uh, you can uh, uh, if you want you can take a check, check, uh, check x-ray after that so this is the two things you must need for this uh, tumor reconstruction it is the topo as well as the scale so if you have a simulator you uh, mark it with your simulator this is the sim uh, simulator it is a um, duplication of machine with dose delivery without dose delivery so they uh, we will have a, a jaw x jaw y jaw x1 y1 x2 y2 like this you can uh, if you are treating with cobalt you can make a plan with ssd it so this is the um, skull if you uh, uh, on the simulator and you can mark according the uh, after the tumor definition you can make fix your field size so these are the various 2D plannings, either you have a digitizer, you have to clinical, you have to simulator, all methods are possible, but it is not accurate, it is a, it is a approximation of the, your tumor. So if you, even if there is a skull is not there, they put a, some uh, uh, titanium plate or something, you can grossly, you can localize your tumor also. So uh, these are the just, uh, it is a reconstruction of the tumor into the skull or in the topo or in the sagittal plane and you open the field accordingly. So how to uh, put the fields? There are many many types. You can put parallel opposed, you can wedge P and wedge parallel combo. So you can uh, use parallel opposed, which you can use P when wedge parallel combos. So if you see, suppose this is the right frontal lesion, you have to go with the com uh, wedge pair combo. If it is in the left wall, again wedge pair combo, you have to go ahead like this. And if it is a posterior, posterior parat, uh, po hospital, you can go like this. And this uh, most of the tumors, we have to go confined with two pairs of um, 45 degree um, wedge pair. Again, if it is a central position in the butt placed anteriorly, you can go with two wedge pair and with anterior um, open beam like that. If it is a tumor, tumor is placed posteriorly, you can go with a two wedge pair like this. Again, if it is a laterally placed but it is in the center, like right parietal lobe, so we have to, it, you can go with a two, parietal, two parallel opposite field, two is to one ratio. Suppose you are giving 180 gray, 120 from this side and 110 from the oh, 60 from other side. So you can go for the um, uh, uh, beam arrangement. If you want to more confined, you can go to anterior posterior to wedge pair with one lateral beam. So again, same thing. Uh, if the uh, uh, tumor is local, local, located in the uh, left lateral, you can go with a two is to one uh, parallel opposed, or you can use two anterior, anterior posterior wedge with two uh, with open lateral wedge, lateral open beam. Same thing, but if it is a center, exactly center, you have to go with two lateral beams. Another thing is the pituitary, and you see the here pituitary here. So, uh, as you know, tragus line, uh, it is a two centimeter anteriorly, it will have to place the uh, center, and you two by two, uh, four by four uh, tumor size, uh, sorry, field size, uh, you can mark it, and you can take a check x ray 
to see the uh, whether it is confined to your um, uh, uh, pituitary fossa or not so this is the uh, how to do the pituitary planning but remember if you are seeing in the paracellular extension and supracellular extension don't mind to go slightly extra field size either another 1 cm or 2 cm either directions it will be better to confine this team uh, uh, <coughs> confine the field within the field because you are going 45 to 50 gray don't worry for the optic asthma and optic nerve because we are no, optic asthma optic nerve mostly it is a 54 gray um, the tolerance dose nothing to worry Hope you, you can go directly 45 to gray to uh, 45 gray to 50 uh, 54 50.4 gray as per your uh, institution protocol then if you see this is the pituitary planning uh, if you see bilateral uh, what, what i the field i told this is a bilateral you can see without an mlc bilateral field with with mlc then this is the vertex field you can see here this vertex field to anterior uh, sorry not two lateral with one uh, vertex field vertex field means non isocentric with couch rotation to prevent um, uh, dose to the eye you can go you can plan this way also so C, uh, csi planning again uh, 2d planning if you want to do you have to at least uh, three two beams and this is the uh, lateral beam and this is the uh, anterior beam but I, as madam told uh, Tezpal sir is going to talk about the um, <coughs> medulloblastoma so I am not confined to this area so but uh, three two three things I want to tell about this when you are planning for the uh, medulloblastoma always uh, control the ethmoid control the uh, all foraminas like uh, from the lacerum uh, foramina spinosum foramina ovale internal acoustic meatus ethmoid plate and all this you have to contour and in the spinal level you should contour the all uh, spinal nerve roots if you not contouring the spinal nerve roots or no, not opening around this lateral border of the spinal nerve roots then you are missing something so this is the cranial field this is the spinal field so this is and this is a posterior fossa boost where you can go ahead with uh, uh, you have to draw a line between uh, um, vertex to the midpoint of the med foramen magnum and two third junction one third junction you can point and go for the field and this is the whole brain uh, 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 irradiation and this is the whole brain irradiation we can go with the uh, oblique uh, mlc field and remember when you are uh, planning for the leukemias and lymphoma lymphomas where they are going the prophylactic cranial irradiation those having the uh, meningeal spread you, you have to see the uh, ethmoid plate and you have to control the ethmoid plate and uh, at least one centimeter uh, from flower ethmoid plate you have to go to one centimeter below that uh, um, uh, in a lateral field so this is you have to control as i controlled here so you see this ethmoid plate and uh, you have to uh, you have to very careful when you are planning the pci or uh, CSI, you should you should not forget this line. But when you are giving whole vein RT, it is not mandatory to control the ethmoid uh, product of ethmoid. So this is the CSI fields. I am not going to this, and you can see some beam arrangements in for the lateral placed tumors. And this is the vertex field um, uh, from frontal lobe lesions. So uh, let's uh, uh, I will show you some. Uh, 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 tumors actually so because I, I just plan for the demonstration purpose this is a planning system electa uh, monaco planning system uh, so the uh, suppose your lesion in the front uh, frontal lobe so this is the frontal lobe you have to go for the two, bil uh, two bilateral fields if you uh, at least you can understood and you have to block the eye this is the frontal lobe tumor, but be very careful when you are sparing this ethmoid plate. If it is your left frontal lobe, so you can see this is the left frontal two anterior one anterior beam and posterior beam. Uh, sorry, one anterolateral beam. But if you see the wedges, so these are the wedges. So this is the wedge. This is the 45 degree wedge. Like that, you can see the 45 degree wedge pair. So this is the uh, how the uh, beam coverings for the left frontal lobe. Again. If you tumor, if you suppose your tumor is in the left occipital lobe, again, wedge pair again, you can see here wedge here. So you can see wedge here. 
So these are two wedge pair again. You have to do the body contour and uh, sorry brain contour on the paper and other way you can do digitization or simulation as per your need. So this is the coverage. Uh, you can see this. Uh, this is the this is the tumor here. And this is if suppose your left parietal lesion is there. You can see this is the left parietal lesion. You can go for direct lateral field on uh, lateral field and uh, on the, um, this is the uh, AP, uh, PA lateral and if you go for the some occipital lesions here again so this is the again two lateral field that covering the occipital lesion if it is your right frontal lobe so again it is a two uh, wedge pair you can see the wedge pair see this is the wedge here looks very small here you can uh, appreciate the wedge here and uh, you can see the wedge here again if it is a right occipital lobe again you see again this is a two wedge pair again here and if it is a right parietal lobe again this is the again you can go with some wedge pair or open field with lateral so these are the uh, various uh, lesions and uh, if you are a pituitary if your lesion is at the center around the cella, you can see here. So you can go for bilateral field 2D. Just uh, and if you uh, want to some buttocks field, you can you want to include. But buttocks field in 2D settings, it is not uh, not uh, advisable. And uh, so if you see buttocks field, you can see this is the gantry. This is the collimator. This couch is 90 degree. So this is the you can see here couch i have changed at the 90 degree so this is the uh, vertex field with vertex field pituitary and uh, another thing i want to tell when you are planning your whole brain rt this is the whole brain rt you can do an mlc you can you have to contour the eye uh, left eye right eye left eye so you can see here we have to block and uh, this is the field how to arrange and uh, uh, if you want to, so the, this is the whole brain RT dose distribution you can see here. But remember, this here we didn't uh, partially cover the trivipulum profile with mid bone. But if you see, if you are planning for the uh, PCI or CSI, you uh, remember you have to contour the ethmoid plate, trivipulum profile ethmoid plate, it should not be blocked. and Apart from that, you have to control the foramen lacerum, foramen ovale, foramen spinosum, uh, external auditic canal left, external right. So these are the uh, contours you can, you have to do the, these all contours. So, so if you see, when you are planning for the, uh, uh, the whole PCI, or CSI whole brain, then you have to do, um, do this contourings like uh, uh, foramen lacerum. This is foramen lacerum. This is just ovale. The um, green one is the spinosum, and this is the uh, this is the uh, external uh, external auditory canal. This yeah, so how can you see better in the external auditory canal? You go to the bone window or auto skin window. You can see here this. So this is the external uh, auditory canal. So this is the right. Uh, this is the right external auditory canal and left external auditory canal. You have to contour. Uh, so these two contours has to be done, and you have to cover at least one centimeter below these lines when you are planning for PCI and CSI. So these are the various uh, beam uh, beam arrangements, dose distribution. And basics of the two uh, D planning. Anything anybody can ask uh, because I am going to jump into the contouring uh, presentation. So anything you want to know? Uh, any charts, madam? I think you cannot yet. Yeah. Uh, yes, ma'am. Hello. You can continue further. Uh, no question. So anything two D planning? Anybody? Any anybody wants to know more because I have a planning system. I am sharing my planning system here. Okay. So I am stopping my presentations on the uh, uh, 2D planning. I am going to the contouring planning system, uh, contouring of the main topic today. So today uh, I will tell you about the 
tips and tricks in target delineation of brain tumors other than glioma. So in the morning, uh, our uh, struggling starts. We just go to uh, our washroom. We just uh, take that. We mix with hot water and cold water. That struggle starts. In the daytime, we just uh, fight with our target and OR and we fight with the physicist to get in the good therapeutic benefit. At the evening, we fight with our mother and uh, wife to maintain equilibrium. So, uh, we as a radiation oncology, we fight always. But always we want to move the target forward and OR backward. So, this is the uh, main uh, main thing behind our contouring even small contouring causes more uh, systematic error that cannot be solved by any man. So, we have to contour properly, we have to target properly. We have to see that anything should, we should always um, go with that there should not be any recurrence, we should not miss anything, we should take a help of radiologist, we should take a help of the clinical um, um, uh, clinical notes, we should take the help of uh, um, uh, all colleagues whenever there is a, a intra, uh, in, inter observer, intra, we should take the help of in, uh, our own colleagues to correct the control. So, before that, we have to analyze ourselves, browse, communicate, deliver and extract care. So, this A, B, C, D, we should follow. So, as we have to analyze our uh, radiological findings, clinical findings and guidelines, and we have to search, we have to communicate with each other and uh, so that uh, we can deliver good results. So, if you see, adjusting the window is very important because we have a bone window, we have a soft tissue window, we have a medestinum window, we have a long window. So, how to adjust? Is it uh, easy or we have to always try, uh, talk to the radiologist? So, it is very easy, nothing to worry. So, there are two things, one is brightness, another is the contrast. Brightness refers to the overall lightness of the or darkness of the image. Contrast is the difference between the brightness between the objects inside the image. Let's see. So, if you see any, uh, even if you go to the Monaco system or a variant system, you will find the window level and window width. So, this is the called wind. If you drag your mouse vertically, so uh, brightness will change. And in we drag your mouse uh, uh, horizontally, the so uh, contrast will change. So, suppose. But what is brightness? So, if you see the left hand of the left, left image, the total brightness, uh, uh, total image, if you change anything, the total image will change color. But if you right side, if you see, if you change the image, inside the image, it changes. So, the face is, looks more beautiful and more shining comparing to the, uh, uh, comparing to other part. So, if you see, this is the width. So, brightness is the window level. Uh, uh, contrast is the window width. So, if you want to change the brightness, if your mouse, you have to uh, adjust your mouse in vertically. And if you are change your window width or window um, uh, uh, contrast, so you have to change your mouse, uh, drag your mouse horizontally. And if you want to change the both, you can drag diagonally. So, this is the basic thing you have to change. But there is a preset values of other things, you can go and click, you can see the preset values also. So, why, if you see this uh, giraffe is doing contouring of the, I mean, uh, painting of the uh, lion, he's, when he's con uh, drawing, only back side of the, because he's, he's seeing in the only back side, he's not looking the face. So, if you do like this, you have to contour in the axial slice, you have to contour in the coronal slice, you have to, con uh, mostly we do contour in axial slice, but you have to refer uh, coronal slice, HL is sagittal slice. So, only doing in axial slice is not sufficient. So, when we ask for MRI protocol, we are when a patient brain tumor comes to us, we are, we send a patient to do an MRI. So, what MRI protocol we send for the, we got for T1, T2, player sequence, that is the usual sequence. There is a sequence good sequence called 3D FSPGR contrast to know the normal anatomy. That is mostly useful for the contrast, uh, mostly useful for the optic chiasm, optic pathway contouring. 5 1 to 5 1 to matrix, 1 mm slice, no gap, no tilt, neutral neck, and field of vision should include body contour from nose, eye, and skull. So, this, this all things should be uh, in the um, your um, uh, MRI protocol or MRI prescription 
and when you have a your pax system that picture archiving communication system is there in your uh, hospital if they, you can get, you will get in the pax system if you don't have a pax system ask the outside radiologist when mri is there please provide the dicom cd and you you also you have to ask sequence as per tumor suppose you are asking for a pituitary post of tumor you have to ask for a star sequence to know the difference between the residual tumor and the pecking material so like that if you are asking for a swanama so you have to uh, you have to ask for the fiesta sequence so uh, sequencing of mri is a different uh, class again so you have to do this mri protocol when you are sending for a patient for mri protocol for planning all this should be included in your paper so you have to do the planning ct you have to do three months slice contrast vertex to neck and uh, i will go first with the target delineation of meningioma so meningioma has a three group three parts one is the enhancing part that is the tumor this is the dura and uh, adjacent bone so there are various guidelines you can go through istro ecrop guideline for skull based tumors you can go for the rtog 0539 guideline so what are the conflicts why meningioma is contouring is a very conflicting is it conflicting really so why there is a problem it should uh, uh, so because there are four things involved one is the gtv proper dural tail edema hyperostosis so if you see uh, if you see the target delineation of the meningioma there are concept is called the concept the concept is nothing t for thickened dura h he h for hyperostotic bone e for enhancing mass these three has to be carefully handled during the meningioma contouring so if you see the who grade 1 and who grade 2 grade 3 in who grade 1 we hardly give gtv to cbtv i usually unnecessary but if you give to who grade 2 and grade 3 tumor you are contouring at least 1 to 2 cm you have to give for the um, gtv to ctv so this is the uh, and ptv according to your point 0.5 or point 0.3 what protocol either igrt or normal imrt vmrt or following if you can decrease your if your daily igrt you are doing then you can decrease to the 5 mm to, to 3 mm so wh why dural tail is important whether i should include my you can see this is the proper tumor and this is the dural tail you can see the dural tail so if you do you interested to take the whole dural tail no so we should not take whole dural tail because uh, this dural tail is not a tumor it is a thickened vascular part so thickened vascular dura so we should not take it it is more first coined by william settle the the um, uh, his 1989 he given the date so the gtv should not be modified with respect to the dural tail however nodular dural enhancement will be considered as a target and will be concluded included within the gtv so if you see in this picture this this nodular enhancement is there you have to take this um, as a gtv but you should not include all dural enhancements adjacent to the your meningioma another is called hyperostosis hyperostosis is nothing it is the bone reaction or adjacent inner table skull reaction to your meningioma so the tumor engagement uh, tumor invasion into the bone it should be included but how will you differentiate uh, how will you understand this thing you have to go for the bone window and see there is any bony changes see this is the bony changes you cannot appreciate properly but if you see the bone or uh, changes you can hope to but here if you see the it is attached to the bone there is no bone changes here in the lower lower imaging upper imaging that there is a uh, change in the bone uh, skull bone so if there is a adjacent bone is involved if there is a hyperostosis reaction you should include that hyperostosis bone in the field whether it is my is a part of gtv or ctv in the meningioma no so this edema does not connect in tumor if you see the meningium growth either may be due to ischemia or bgf a secretion that angiogenic spillover and distribution of blood vein blood vein barrier there is a peritumoral edema or intratumoral water content compression of tumor vessel drainage intratumoral congestion angiogenic factor build up so these are not the um, uh, increased vascular permeability increased decretumal cerebral pile vasculature distribution of the blood vein barrier that causes the brain edema but reality 
it does not contain any meningeal tumor uh, meningeal uh, tumor tissue so meningeal in the cerebral edema need not to be included within the gtv or ctv even in grade 3 tumor so when we treat the meningioma we can you can follow the rtog 0539 table they have divided into group 1 group 1 and group 2 and group 3 group 1 is the low risk group 2 is the intermediate risk group 3 the high risk low risk is the grade 1 gross tumor tumor or subtotal dissection intermediate group is the recurrent grade 1 or new grade 2 or any grade 3 uh, sorry uh, new uh, new grade 2 so this uh, is the gross total dissection so this is the intermediate risk and high risk any who grade 3 recurrent grade 2 with gtr or str and new grade 2 with str so, str is the subtotal dissection gtr is the gross total dissection so these are the three groups in group 1 you can observe in group 2 you can go for the 54 grain 30 fraction group 3 you can go for the 60 grain 30 fraction so if you see the gtv ctv ptg so in group 3 uh, group 3 and uh, group 2 and group 2 so gtv nodular enhancing tissue tumor board it post do not include cerebral edema or dural tail ctv 54 in group 2 group 3 ctv 54 gtv plus 2 centimeter but reduce 1 centimeter around the bone unless there is a hyperostasis if there is a hyperostasis then use 2 centimeter and constrict from other natural barriers ctv 60 is gtv plus 1 centimeter ptv is ctv plus 3 to 3.3 to 5 mm this is for mostly grade 3 but if it is a grade 2 stop at 54 so this is the uh, you can see the blue line C, uh, ctv this is the green line in the gtv then blue line ctv plus 1 centimeter and ptv is the 3.5 mm you can see here let's some take some examples so this is the patient of a patient who has a G, pre op gtv is looks like this with a, you can see parasagittal meningioma after surgery it looks the cavity is loose uh, cavity then no tumor but there is a some enhancement so what do you have to do you have to control residual this is this is the residual gtv then you have to give 2 centimeter for the ctv 54 then you have to give for ctv 60 you have to give for 1 centimeter so and uh, this is another tumor where how to handle the dural tail you have to take the enhanced part of the dural tail, nodular dural tail, but don't take the pro only dural enhancements. If, if there is, you can see in the bone window, these are the, you can see the diaphragm celli or posterior clinoid process and this optic uh, process, you can see there is a bony changes. So, these are called hyperostatic bone. You should include in your GTP. Trim, then the um, plan came to trim. So, the main thing is to how to trim. So, I have extrapolated from the glioma contouring. So, you have to extrapolate, uh, con uh, trim yourself from the inner table of skull, fax, ventricle, optic apparatus, brain stem, and tentorium. So, if it is the, uh, it is the skull, uh, so when you are trimming yourself from the skull, uh, uh, from the bone by, by skull, never trim along the bone uh, brain window or soft tissue window. You, have, you can see here the difference of brain tissue you are missing here in the brain window. So, if you are trimming your skull bone uh, from the GTV, uh, CTV, you should in, uh, select the bone window and uh, uh, try to trim. Never trim in the soft tissue or brain window. Like that along the flags, don't cut yourself around the flags. You at least go for the 0.5 centimeter to the opposite side. Again, same the ventricles, don't stop at the edge of the ventricle, at least go inside the 0.5 inside to the ventricle. Like that, there is a disease called N-plex meningioma. N-plex meningioma refers to a specific meningioma microscopic appearance characterized by diffuse, extensive dural involvement, usually with extra canal extent to the calvarium, orbit and softies. Even you can see in the going to the meninge, maxilla, nasopharynx. This team was thought to be collar like seat like growth along the diameter, different from the usual global meningiomas. Usually, the extra canal extension to the calvarium, orbit, soft tissue, and thickening enhancement will be included in the GTV. So, you see, this is the meningioma. This is the N-plex meningioma. We see how it is covering from the one part of total of the half, half part of the skull. Another meningioma you can see here. This is going to the soft tissue in the infratemporal fossa. 
you can see here. So another meningiomas, uh, cellular meningioma, how it is going in the uh, spinoid sinus and uh, going to the infratemporal fossa. So as uh, was my central part, you can see this is enplaque meningias. Another, you can you can see the enplaque meningioma, how it is plaque like going to the everywhere. So <clears throat> well, sometimes we cannot differentiate in the MRI because of which is a tumor tissue and which is the normal bone. In that situation, you can take the help of Dotatoc pet. Dotatoc is the pet is useful for the meniscal base, useful mostly used for the skull base meningiomas, frontal, visifrontal meningiomas. So that will allow you to differentiate between the meningioma, anything you are missing. So these are the comparison of um, uh, if they will get n number of articles in uh, net. And uh, so yeah, remember this pituitary is normal. So these are the things you have to remember some which is normal uptake and uh, uh, physiological tracer uptake in the pituitary gland. So don't think that it is a meningioma. So if, you, if there is a doubt, you just uh, comparison with pituitary, uh, sorry, comparison with the MRI and com comparison with the Dota scan. Again, uh, you can take the help of Dota pet. You will, sometimes this is tumors are not visible properly in MRI CT. You can take the help of Dota pet and uh, um, go for the uh, um, uh, Dota pet CT fusion or MRI fusion or MRI pet CT triple fusion. So if you see the in final from GTV to CTV, additional margin expansion from GTV to CTV is unnecessary for benign meningiomas. However, a small margin of few millimeter may be added to the encompass potential areas, areas of microscopic tumor infiltration, rapidly going tumor like intra -cavern uh, cavernous portions of the proximal region of the dural tail, avoiding extensive coverage of the distal portion. For grade 2, grade 3 meningiomas, CTV is defined as the GTV plus 2 cm margin in preoperative tumor bed and the peritrimal edema and edema should not be covered. Hyperostatic bone changes and dural enhancement as seen at, uh, should be covered. Margin for the PTV, 3 to mm around the um, CTV and uh, you should go 3 to, point, uh, 3 to uh, 5 mm around the natural barriers like in the skull, corpus, um, corpus callosum, um, uh, you can go for the, around the ventricle. At least go, don't abruptly stop along the walls, you at least you go 3 to 5 mm to the opposite side in the central uh, parasagital meningiomas and paraventricular meningiomas. So, in uh, uh, in summary, the GTV will be defined by the tumor bed on the post-operative enhanced MRI and is to include any residual nodular enhancements. Neither cerebral edema nor the dural tear are to be specifically included in the GTV. However, nodular dural enhancement will be considered as a target and will be included in the GTV. For grade 3 tumors, CTV 54 will be GTV plus 1 centimeter margin. For grade 3 CTV plus uh, 60 plus GTV plus 1 centimeter margin and CTV 54 will be 2 centimeter. CTV margin may be reduced 0.5 centimeter around the natural barriers. Target reduction will not be permissible with uh, hyperostatic and restricted embedded bone. And uh, you should give uh, 0.3 to 0.5 mm, uh, 3 centimeter uh, PTV according to your reproducibility, localization method, and your institutional protocol. Reducing the PTV margin to modify organ set is not generally permissible. So this is all about meningiomas. Um, you can um, uh, so uh, this is the all about the meningiomas. So another protocol, another thing is target delineation in whole ventricular radiotherapy. When you have a planning for the germ cell tumors, uh, the pineal germ cell, supracellular germ cell tumor, you are going for the target delineation in ventricular radiotherapy. Before that, you have to understand the ventricles first. There are ventricular system, there are two lateral ventricles, one third, third ventricle, one fourth ventricle, and intraventricular foramen that is known as a monora that is connecting to the lateral to third ventricle. Acuity of salvius that is third to fourth. Two median aperture in the um, um, uh, uh, in the fourth ventricle is known as the foramen mesendi. Two lateral aperture in, is known as the foramen losca that is the CP angle team. So if you see this is two lateral ventricle, there is interventricular foramen to the third. This is the cerebral aqueduct that is going to the fourth ventricle and two median apertures come mesendi and that is the central canal in the spinal canal. So if you see there are lateral ventricles, again there is a frontal horn, occipital horn and temporal horn. 
there is a third ventricle, there is a fourth ventricle, and that is a central canal. From the lateral ventricle to the third ventricle is known as a foramen monoro. From third ventricle to fourth ventricle is known as a acute of sylvius. So this is the two lateral ventricle, interventricular foramen. This is the third ventricle. This, you, you, this is the third. And uh, as I told, there are two lateral uh, apertures from the fourth ventricle is in foramen lusca, and central is the foramen mesendi. Again, I am just showing this is the frontal horn, occipital horn, temporal horn. So this is the CSF pathway. You can see that uh, it is uh, originated from the these are the choroid plexus, this brown color, these are choroid plexus. This is going to the third ventricle, fourth ventricle, it travels to the four, uh, fourth ventricle, then uh, um, uh, so lateral ventricle, it goes to interventricular foramen, third ventricle, acuator sylvius, fourth ventricle, then going to the subarachnoid space, then arachnoid villi, then superior sagittal planus. This is the CSF pathway. So you can see here, these are the choroid plexus, it is going. This is the um, uh, third uh, uh, lateral ventricle, it is going to um, in the third ventricle by acute of sylvius, it goes to the fourth ventricle. This is the lateral aperture, this is the median aperture, this is the central canal. Then it goes to the subarachnoid shares, this is arachnoid granulation, then draining into the superior sagittal sinus. So this is the all CSA pathway. So comes to the imaging, if you see this is a lateral ventricle, this is the third, this is the acute of sylvius through the um, this is the midbrain through the um, uh, acute of sylvius. This is the fourth ventricle. This is the midline. Again, this is the cere cerebral uh, peduncle. This is the this is Mickey Mouse sign. So this is the acute of sylvius. So as I see as a flow, as I told before. So this third, uh, this is a lateral ventricle, third ventricle, acute of sylvius, fourth ventricle, then central canal. The, these are the two lateral ventricles in the axial slice. This is the frontal horn. This is the um, uh, plaque cerebri. This is caudate lobe. Then this is the this is the occipital lobe. This is occipital horn. You can see here. This is the temporal horn. You can see here temporal horn. This is the normal size lateral ventricles. Frontal horn, occipital horn and temporal horn in other direction. So you have to see all horns, then comes to the third ventricle, which is a straight ventricle or thinner ventricle, you can call it. So this is the third ventricle here. Then this is the fourth ventricle. Number four, it is written. It is the cerebellum. This is the pons and the triangular structure. One is the floor and is the roof of the fourth ventricle. This is the four number. This is the exactly fourth ventricle where you say it. This is the fourth ventricle. There are two median operators, uh, one median operator that is called foramen mesendi, two lateral, it is the lusca. So, apart from that, the systems are so important when you are going for the whole ventricular radiotherapy. So what are the systems? There is a pericolosal system, interpeduncular system, nothing to worry, I will tell you all things. Supercellular systems, prepontine systems, premedullary system, uh, these, are peri uh, these are the various uh, supercellular systems quadrigeminal system and cisterna magna. So this is the sylvian system. You can see sylvian fissure here and this is the sylvian system. This is the supracellular system. Cella, cella, this is, this is optic ijum, this is a pituitary fossa, this is the supracellular system. This is the ambient system, the lateral side of the midbrain, this is the ambient. This is the quadrigeminal, back side of the midbrain, this is called quadrigeminal system. This is the uh, interpeduncular system between the uh, V structure in pons, anterior pons. This is the interpeduncular system. This is the prepontine system, anterior to the pons. This is the tadpole uh, uh, bulging. You can see here, this is the pons. Anterior to this is the prepontine system. So how to handle the intracranial gemstal tumor? So if you see, these are the um, two sides. One is the um, pineal, another is the suprasala. So you can uh, see, I'm not going to the proper management properly, but if you see the, you can uh, classify your tumor according to the presence of alpha beta protein and beta HCG, either maybe mature teratoma or cardiocarcinoma, yolk septimor or embryonoloma or germinoma. So if you go to the SIOP guidelines, what you have to do, if there is a germinoma, 
if it is metastatic germinoma, localized germinoma, or non germinoma. If it is a localized germinoma, com uh, chemotherapy, if there is a complete response, you have to go for a full ventricular 24 gray in 15 fraction alone. If there is a partial response, you have to full ventricular therapy 24 gray, followed by focal boost 16 gray in 10 fraction. So, uh, this is the uh, localized germinoma. If metastatic disease, you have to go full CSI and 16 gray to the primary and metastatic sites. In localized non germinoma, your focal radiotherapy, uh, chemotherapy, followed by focal radiotherapy, metastatic germin, non germinoma, you have to go by CSI 30 gray, uh, CSI 30 gray in 20 fraction, and followed by boost 24 in 15 percent of the primary and metastatic site. So there are uh, other versions, but uh, if you see the, in germinoma, the role of whole ventricular radiotherapy is there. So what should be the target volume for whole ventricular radiotherapy? The whole ventricular radiotherapy should encompass third ventricle, lateral ventricle, fourth ventricle. Care should be taken to ensure the supracellular and pineal systems are included in the whole ventricular radio, um, uh, radiotherapy and PTV 3mm. So you have to do imaging 1 and 3mm slice, you do the CT scan, you do the T2MR. So you can both this atlas is available freely on the net. You can go for this uh, ACNS 1123 guideline. So, what uh, in one slide, if I can tell in whole ventricular radiotherapy, you have to go for lateral ventricle, third ventricle, fourth ventricle, supracellular system, pineal system, large cellular uh, tumor, uh, endoscopic, if large cellular tumor or endoscopic third ventriculostomy has done, then include the prepontine system and expand the 3 mm, 3 to 5 mm PTB. So, if you see, this is the lateral ventricle. You can the supracellular system, prepontine system, how it is included. Let's see one by one. So this is the one um, 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 pink one is the CTV and blue uh, blue one is the PTV. So this is including a lateral ventricle. Well, how we include the lateral ventricle? You can see this is the occipital horn. This is the frontal horn. This is the third ventricle. This is the um, uh, occipital horn. This is the prepontine, this is a quadrigeminal system, this is a prepontine system, this is the supracellular system. And again, you have to go for a man, uh, in, uh, sorry, occipital horn, include supracellular system, this is the supracellular system here. If you want to go for the proper uh, systemal finding, you have to go for the fiesta sequence. So this is the prepontine system again, include the fourth ventricle, this is the fourth ventricle, you can see here. Include foramen mesendi and losca. Losca is laterally and medial is the mesendi. So this is the inferior slice where you um, just um, uh, yeah, yeah, like that uh, brainstem where it stops. We can go for the inferior slides there. So these are the uh, how we and how whole ventricular radiotherapy uh, looks like. Uh, so this is for the uh, germ cell tumor and whole ventricular radiotherapy. Uh, then uh, next slice, next is the target illness for intact brain met SRS. So brain met SRS, GTV, contrast enhancement on the tumor, CTV is equal to GTV and PTV is equal to 2 mm. So if you see, this is the contour. You can, after contouring, you can give 2 mm. Then uh, this is the very simple brain met, uh, brain, uh, met SRS is very simple, nothing to uh, tell about this. The main thing, main problem comes when the, you are planning for the brain met cavity SRS. So suppose you have any brain tumor, single lesion is there, any neurosurgeon done the surgery, how to handle these things? So why there is a importance in this thing? This pattern of recurrence in cavity, that is a cavity because it is a leptomeningeal spread. One is the nod nodular pattern spread, one is the sugar cutter pattern spread. That is a surgical tract and based on the histology. So so this is called sugar pattern of stroke along the um, uh, pile meters. This is called sugar coat pattern and this is the nodular pattern of recurrence. So when there is a brain met, the cavity surgery is done outside, you have to contour all uh, that cavity pattern, contouring pattern is totally different. So, uh, uh, so as I told, nodular pattern recurrence and classical uh, not uh, uh, leptomeningeal spread is known as sugar getting, sugar coating recurrence. So there is a consensus guideline published in a red journal. You can go through this guideline. So what is the thing? So you should, you can remember A, B, C, D, E. This is the five things we have to include. One is the adjacent dura, bone flap, 
सी फर कैविटी प्रॉपर डी फर डूरल साइनस ई फर एनहांसिंग कंपोनेंट सो एटलीस्ट ए ऑल दिस थिंग्स इंक्लूड पॉइंट फाइव टू वन सेंटीमीटर इन योर मार्जिन सो सपोज ए फर एडजस्ट एंड डूरल सपोज दिस इज योर कैविटी हियर दिस इज योर कैविटी हियर एंड यू हैव टू इंक्लूड वन सेंटीमीटर एलॉन्ग द दिस एडजस्ट एंड डूरल like that you have to bony flap this is the bony flap you have to include you don't uh, they you have to include then cavity proper a b c cavity proper then dural sinus El along the dural sinus you have to include then enhancing component these are the enhancing component so this a b c d should not forget to uh, contour from the brain mat cavity srs this is the, the usually cavity srs uh, the tumor is looks like uh, this so you should um, uh, not forget uh, to when the brain mat cavity srs is there you have to be very careful include all these five points so this is the ptv how you can give 1 cm to m to a 1 mm to m according to your institutional protocol and you can brain man ctv and you can go for the multiplanar imaging looking at the multiplanar imaging and uh, remember don't if brain mat cavity has done uh, brain mat surgery has done outside don't start radiation or uh, as per mri within 21 days because there is a protocol called uh, brain mat uh, cavity stabilization so if you, within 21 days if you do it the cavity will not be proper your mri and ct fusion will be not proper so you have to take the uh, ct after uh, sorry, you have to take mri after 21 days and you have to complete your radiation before 28 days so this is the dictum when you are doing a uh, brain mat cavity srs so these are the cavity dynamics how it less than 21 days how it is stabilizes over 22 to 42 days so before that give adequate uh, dexa ranitidine uh, m set anti epileptics and manitol before taking an mri and uh, this uh, uh, so when you are going just uh, like uh, mri planning after 24th day and treatment planning at the 28th day so uh, this is the all about uh, my, uh, my presentation today and uh, uh, there are all other controlling cells there but it is not uh, adequate uh, uh, long time to com control uh, and complete all those things if at time permits or if you can get an opportunity i will present uh, uh, any other class thank you very much you can ask uh, or to chat any questions i will love to answer thank you dr petro that was an excellent presentation and you have very well covered the 2d aspects as well as the contouring aspects uh, so we don't have any question and answers in the chat box uh, audience please if you have any question you can put them in the chat box which can be discussed right now so meanwhile i want to ask uh, dr petro yes ma'am that uh, when you are doing an mri for planning purpose uh -huh. so are you using a mold for that also no no usually our systems are now so my if you see the electa or varian monaco or aria system there so much we don't if your institution is there with mri within your institution you can use your mask but we don't we don't have an mri in our hospital but we send for the mri outside but we uh, we don't find any obstacle for the fusion yeah exactly uh, as we are also we have mri in our institute but it does not allow putting the mask and putting the uh, head uh, is very tough MRI. but i think there is will be no fusion problem with uh, without mask yeah that's what i was saying that if uh, the in mri they have not used the headrest and in planning city headrest has been used then uh, there will be some discrepancy in proper fusion in such a situation we can do that at least we can match the area of interest if whole of the things are not matching then area of interest should be matched and then contouring should be done yes ma'am yes yeah. usually uh, uh, we take ct planning ct and planning mr we have a protocol as i shown in one slide where 12 things we ask in the planning mr we don't try to actually go for planning mr not we have 12 things you have to ask so this 12 lines uh, we have a printed paper you give to the patient we have a uh, before we inform the radiologist do that <laughs> Uh, so uh, we don't find any problem uh, regularly with fusion issues yeah okay uh, dr patra i have one question 
Suppose hmm. one patient comes to us uh, post-operative okay. with CSF herniation. How you manage the case? First, you uh, send patient to the neurosurgeon for this management. You or you continue your radiotherapy plan accordingly. Uh, uh, which permanent? Uh, any uh, tumor? Why? Which particular tumor you are asking? Uh, basically, I am talking about the suppose uh, uh, occipital glioma. I have seen one patient. Okay. So the, the, um, uh, if a neurosurgeon is taking care, it is good and fine. If neurosurgeon is not taking care, if uh, he is not interested to have surgery. Then I go for the dream protocol. Dream means uh, we just protocolly follow DEXA, RANTAC, anti-epileptics, manitol, and um, um, eptoin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you will continue your radiotherapy as, as per your protocol. Okay. So we have a question. Uh, how to fuse skull-based structures? Uh, how to fuse skull-based structures? I, mean, I, I, I didn't get the proper question properly. I think... Uh, uh, he is asking any of my, my. so few same thing only we don't uh, many um, skull based structures we do three contourings any calcification in the brain eye basilar artery these three controls and fuse uh, we plan for automatic fusion and manual fusion and do that I think uh, that is the sufficient to any uh, CTMR fusion okay any other question Dr. Shalini is here so you want to say something, any yeah, comment? No, uh, just to thank Dr. Uh, Patro for uh, uh, a fairly reasonable presentation. I noticed that we've discussed class solutions for 2D planning, which is very good. Uh, uh, the only thing, uh, one of the, one of the uh, cases, Dr. Patro, you talked about was when you have three few techniques in cobalt, it is uh -huh. possible to do isocentric planning as well. Okay, by, sir. Yes, you know, you give a tabletop rotation to 90 degrees. And uh, uh, you can give a tabletop rotation to 90 degrees and move the table, position the patient in such a way that the patient is positioned at the head of the, at the, head of the table. The, the, the head of the patient is towards the edge of the table in the direction of the gantry. The table is moved 90 degrees, and then you can give a, uh, a 45 degree counterclockwise rotation, and that will be the that that will be a field somewhere between the vertex of the head and the and the mesion, somewhere there. So it is actually isocentric. Uh, uh, we can do isocentric plans. We do not need to go into a parallel opposed. Uh, uh, parallel post can be both by SSD technique and SAD technique. Yes. So we would prefer SAD technique because then if you give a 90 degree uh, couch rotation and you take the gantry to 45, you can get isocentric. And so that would be three field as possible. I can't remember having done it, but in theory, uh, I cannot remember, I cannot see why we can't do it if we have to do it, just to make sure there's no collision. And I don't anticipate there would be a collision there. But otherwise, I liked your class solutions and simple, uh, you know, it's important to bring this up because many centers still have uh, cobalt, they just have cobalt units and nobody should feel left out. Yes, sir. Uh, it's, I would also, uh, 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 it would be, uh, you can also emphasize the point, just to reiterate your point that parallel opposed fields are never good no. for benign tumors because you would have a 5 to 7% lateral edge effect because of uh, a lateral edge effect you would have. So for every 100 gray, centigrade you give in the center, you would have 107 centigrade going to the temporal lobes on the side. And uh, I know we didn't have time to discuss doses. Uh, I, can't, I can't remember having heard about doses for pituitaries uh, because they are common tumors. So when we looked at non-gliomatosis tumors, the main tumors that we treat are uh, sometimes acoustics, Usually, uh, usually meningiomas, sure, that was covered, and pituitaries, both functioning and non-functioning. And I think it may be uh, wise to, it may be pertinent to mention that for all non-functioning adenomas and functioning adenomas, 45 grain, 25 fractions is good. There is no dose response relationship, although literature often mentions higher doses for functioning adenomas compared to non-functioning adenomas. And they go as high as 54 gray. But uh, as far as my knowledge goes, it is uh, 
just a constant dose. Those are a few things. Acoustics are sometimes treated. Cranios are treated. And uh, as you well know that both cranios and acoustics have uh, a swelling. They can have cystic enlargements in about one in five patients. And these sometimes need omaya reservoirs or drainage. And so those are practical tips that you may want to share with colleagues. But it's a lot to cover, actually. Sir, I, uh, I again get time. Otherwise, I have a, another 100 slide presentations. So it is, I have already covered one hour. Uh, so if I get time, I will go, go for benign tumors, pituitary, craniopharyngiomas, swanomas. I, uh, but I, uh, this time I could not cover, sir. Sorry, right. sir. Happy, happy. So yeah, so we're looking, focusing currently. You're right, absolutely right. So just doing some loud thinking with the team. We're focusing on people who are exam going and MDs. And of course, the depth of coverage that you talk about is for the more experienced people. I completely accept that. But all I have to say is thank you very much. And this was very informative in such a short time. And uh, great appreciation from all of us to you, sir. That's all I would say. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Dr. Patro. You covered 2D planning also. Thank you so much for our request. I definitely will take another class for the remaining dimoma. And other uh, yeah, and mama, yeah. if, I get, if I get time, I can take another class. Yeah, definitely will plan soon. Uh, we get scheduled for this. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Patro, once again. Uh, thank you, Dr. Prechi. And thank you, all participants, for joining the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, everyone.